This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. People who know me think I'm dead. An original drama starring Rosamund Pike and Hugh Laurie. Dear Emily, I had to write. I might be dying, you see. A story about lies and love in the face of death. Emmy, I remember how much of a coward you are. How you used a terrorist attack to run away from your mess and fake your own death. I'm the only one who knows the truth. People Who Knew Me, a 10-part series. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It just smashed right into the World Trade Center. It was a big, big explosion of flames. People Who Knew Me, a story about lies. You used a terrorist attack to run away from your mess and fake your own death. And love. Are you proposing to me? In the face of death. I'm Paul. I'm six weeks into chemo. And I have no eyebrows. An original drama for BBC Sounds. Yeah, something's up. Starring Rosamund Pike and Hugh Laurie. Happy death anniversary. People Who Knew Me. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Jill Scott's Coffee Club. Jill Scott there to little Cruyff turn. Beautiful. It's at home and it's Jill Scott in the six-yard box. From BBC Radio 5 Live. Hello and welcome to another episode of Jill Scott's Coffee Club. Hello. What an exciting <laughs> day it is today. Oh, so exciting. So exciting. We're actually at Soccer Aid training. Yeah, we should point out, shouldn't we? We're like You can probably hear lots of balls being booted around in the background. We haven't been hit yet. Yeah. Fingers crossed we can get through this without either us or our guest being I keep trying concussed. to hide from you guys and you keep finding us. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, they won't find us in the coffee shop. There they are. <laughs> they won't find us at Soccer Aid. There they are. We're just tracing you everywhere, just turning up. Have you got a tracker on my phone? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, Jill? This is so, so cool. I mean, surrounded by not just former amazing football players, but stars of screen, stage, the whole lot. It's, it's, I'd said it's kind of like being at a really famous person aquarium. Yeah. Where you're just kind of stood behind the, the boards just watching all these amazing people just training playing football together. Yeah, it's so it cool. Is. And you just have to keep your cool. Like, as I look out now, I can see Usain Bolt, Mo Farah, like, people just taking shots at Ben, ben. Foster. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's kind of like you feel like you're in a dream or something. And it then does feel a bit like that, doesn't it? Yeah, and I can just see people get an ice cream, so hopefully we can talk quick because I want one before yeah, the melt. Yeah, I have an ice cream, yeah. <laughs> After, I saw Harry Redknapp walk past earlier chomping on an ice cream. <laughs> that was quite funny. You're like, what is going on? It does. It's a little bit out of out of body. It's kind of a bit strange. You sort of just, you, you kind of turn around and you have to remind yourself where you are. Yeah. And that is going to be particularly prevalent today because we're going to speak to Tom Hiddleston I know I thought when you sent the brief through it was Tom Huddleston <laughs> and I was like I used to follow him as a footballer and I was like oh we never spoke about obviously doing like ex pros and then I realised and I was like wow Tom Hiddleston so yeah so excited I've said it again yeah. I've said it again that I'm excited but as if he's coming on Jill Scott's Coffee Club I podcast. know we're really sort of like I mean we're incredibly lucky to have the lionesses on yeah as it is I mean we're sort of branching out now I know, it's incredible I know. where to next going into like movie stars <laughs> yeah. and everything but you know what I bumped into him in training literally when we are training yeah. together he was he was one on one marking you for a bit yeah did you notice that but he's the nicest guy he's so nice like I've only probably had about five ten minutes speaking to him but he's so nice so down to worth um so yeah I'm really looking forward to doing this podcast with him one of the things that I noticed when I walked in is that your face is everywhere <laughs> it's so cool you're like just all these enormous blown up versions of you like I actually can't get away from you it's lovely it's oh, so so cool I haven't actually seen one of them yet I literally got off the train got in a car and it was like right you're onto the pitch in so you go. I How, didn't do any warm-up nothing so has it been nice being because it is a lovely little setup here yeah is it nice getting touches on the ball again oh brilliant honestly we're trained and you don't train for that long you don't obviously they don't want you doing too much before the game and you're not professional athletes anymore so yeah it's been lovely but when training finished I wanted to do more yeah. I was like can I do crossbar challenge can I take some penalties so yeah it's just football you just when you're out there with the ball just nothing else matters and also what's really fascinating is it seems like um, egos left aside right yeah. it doesn't really matter 
where you're from, what you're doing, what your background is, how many followers you've got on whatever platform you're on or whatever. You're out there with a board. Nothing, nothing yeah. else matters. It's just you. And I'm you obviously and... playing in the game, and I, I get really into it, and I like to talk. And I'm like to Jack Wilshire, like left shoulder, someone's coming. And I'm like, as if I'm telling Jack Wilshire <laughs> how to mark <laughs> someone Wilshire in the midfield. So just having these like moments, like the ball fell to Jermaine Defoe, and I'm like, shoot! And I'm like, as if he needs that <laughs> information. <laughs> Jermaine Defoe, the heads up. Probably should shoot now, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think that's the thing with football. Once you get on there, you and your team colours, it's it. it Nothing matters, does it? Gender doesn't matter. Um, if you're a celebrity, a professional, and that's why I love football. I'll give you my prediction. I think you and Tom Hiddleston are going to become best mates after this. Oh, I hope so. Jill Scott's Coffee Club from BBC Radio 5 Live. Welcome to Geo Scott's Coffee Club, Tom Hiddleston. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. What an honour to be here. No, what yeah. an honour to have you Truly. on here. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, what an honour for us all to be at Soccer Aid as well. Soccer Aid for UNICEF. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. My first time, not your first time. No, it is my first it time. It is your first yeah, time. Yeah, because I actually got asked to do it last year and then they said, oh, you have to be retired and I was still playing. So I think they were trying to tell us <laughs> it was time for retirement. That's, but, to be clear, only for pros. Yeah. I haven't retired yet. At least I think I haven't. I hope I haven't. No. Technically no, not, not, right? No. Do you play much football? I think that would be an overstatement. <laughs> um, I love playing football. I love playing. I love. I played all the time when I was a child. Yeah. Um, I was at boarding school, and actually, all sorts of things you know to talk about about boarding school. But the thing that's pertinent is, in the summertime, we had playing fields upon playing fields upon playing fields, and a ready-made eleven aside. Like if you had a spare half an hour, because you're all living together in the same place, yeah. you can just go right quick half an hour kick about before double maths. Wow. Let's go. So we would just play football all the time. So we'd never have to sort of like run around going, you know, scrabbling together a scratch team or yeah. So that was the best thing about it. And everyone was just football obsessed. Did the pitch have like goals and everything as well? You didn't jumpers, have to jumpers use jumpers your, Oh you did have that. to use your jumpers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Such a touch though. To be able to just nip outside and be like, right, we're going. Well I missed it. I, re- re- I sort of it was only after I left I realised how just having everyone around all the time was kind of the best bit about it. Is you've always got, if you want to play anything, tennis, rugby, ultimate frisbee, you know, you've got people who can just like join in immediately. That's yeah. the best thing about it. But we played lots of football. Everyone was mad about football. So how do you feel so far? I mean, we should say at the time of recording, we haven't actually seen you play at Old Trafford yet. So how That's do you true. feel? Like in terms of how's your body holding up? How are you getting on in terms of your touch out there in training? Do you know what? There are people who do this for a living who'd be able to tell you <laughs> more about... I've seen him in training. He's, he's decent. He is decent. I saw him, Matt. You're definitely sort of... not one of them players where you get the ball and think, I don't want to give them the ball. I'm, think, I'm thinking Tom's like a secret right-wing weapon. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Well, let's see if I live up to it. You'll know listening if I have or not. Yeah. <laughs> what team did you support growing up? This probably was show something wrong about me but I, I kind of jumped on the Liverpool bandwagon in the 80s because they were doing so well Yeah. but then when I moved to London I started supporting Arsenal so oh it's been, you switched I switched yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's because Arsenal was around the corner Yeah. and all my friends and my, my in-laws they're all Arsenal fans so it yeah. was just kind of like I just found myself talking about Arsenal more than Liverpool yeah see yeah. I'm always really interested in this when you're working on films or when you're in Hollywood do you try and keep up with everything here are you even able to keep up with everything that's going on back home yeah BBC Sport is a big feature on my on Google <laughs> search <laughs> and sometimes really nice and reassuring if you're away filming somewhere just to keep up, keep track of what's going on I have to say I'm a, I get obsessed by England yeah um, every time England play men's and women's I, I become a different creature Aww. I don't know what that is it's always been I have such happy memories of watching England supporting England and so if I'm ever away and England are playing. I remember I was making a film somewhere and it was the World Cup, but I was getting up at absurd hours in the morning just to watch the games, you know. Wow. And I was kind of not with any Brits, so they didn't really understand. Yeah. So, will we see you following around the women this summer? 100%. In the World Cup? Yeah. I mean, I can't wait. Yeah. It's, uh, I, think, I, think the, I think the wins are favourable. Yeah. The likelihood of a victory is very, very strong. I it's mean, a, here we go. Yeah, I actually agree. I think England, I know there's been a lot of injuries and yeah. people keep talking about it, but yeah, I still think, if Tom's saying we're going to win, we're going yeah, to win. Gonna win. Absolutely we're going to win. Absolutely we are. Can, can you remember your first England 
tournament experience. So the the first time you watched England as a kid and like just fell in love with it. I remember ninety four. No, I remember ninety six. Ninety. Oh, ninety ninety in Italy. Ninety was in Italy, wasn't it? Yeah. And then. I remember Euro 96 really, really well. With, yeah. With Gareth. With Gareth. Gareth miss, yeah. And I was telling David Seaman, I was, I was asking David Seaman last night about all that. And Stuart Pearce had scored, but he'd missed bef- in the previous yeah, tournament. And so that was a real redemption for him. Yeah. And that squad, Gaza was playing and Teddy Sheringham. And it was such a good squad. It was wasn't amazing. It? And I remember that semi final. I just remember it like it was yesterday. One of the strangest experiences I've ever had is I was doing some, uh, an interview with Gareth Southgate and he asked me what was my first tournament. And you and said Euro 96. Euro 96. Oh, no, you and should I have just lied. I just thought about it, but I didn't know what <laughs> to do. You could have said any other <laughs> tournament. I panicked. Yeah, I, I panicked and but I was you like, know what? <laughs> I, what I find so moving about him, and I, like, I feel really overly, well, possibly overly emotionally invested or attached to him, is his clearly gone on a huge journey yeah and the care and carefulness and thoughtfulness and love yeah. that he's been able to give that squad of players as someone who's been there and knows it and it's like i just find it really moving yeah because absolutely. he's able to guide them and take care of them yeah and they've done so well he's such a nice guy yeah. and i think that goes into the team yeah. like the team are lovely like really nice guys dead down to worth and i think that comes from gareth and he's definitely. so thoughtful yeah it seems i mean you know him and i yeah, i just i but it's because of those beginnings and that tournament i think it just goes to show like it's the journey's never over. Yeah. You know? It's well, the way he's managed to use that experience and metabolize it and transform it into a gift. Yeah. Of, it's his generosity to the next generation. Yeah. I, I find, think he'll get that gold and then that'll be the end of the yeah. perfect journey. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect well, you know all about gold, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know all about oh. that. When I it, think them childhood memories of supporting England, like siblings just gathering around your little TV. And I also remember I had a Beckham shirt, but it was a fake one. You know, that you get on <laughs> yes, holiday. Yeah, yeah. It's like that really thin material. Yeah. <laughs> and like the letters weren't even printed on properly. But... Yeah, I think them are the memories when, I know I've spoken about it before, but eventually going on to the Euros um, and getting the success we did, like being an England Winning. fan, yeah. It's like, it's just in you. Like, you're just so excited to support and it watch the England amazing. game. It must feel amazing. Yeah, I think pulling on that shirt, when yeah. you see that England crest just on you, it's just, it's just a different feeling. Like, you kind of become like a superhero. Yeah, <laughs> I like that segue. <laughs> well, more than, more than, except yeah. we're, you know, superheroes. We're all assisted by wires and visual <laughs> effects. You know, we're not actually out there live on the pitch. You know, yeah. we get another take if it goes wrong. Yeah, so you guys don't get another take. This is really interesting, right? How does it feel knowing that it's you could maybe make that mistake or do that oh, thing yeah. in front of was it seventy thousand people? Seventy thousand people and however many millions watching at home. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> it's new, but it's also exciting. I mean, I've done a lot of. Th- I started in the theatre and still try and, and perform in the theatre. Danny Dyer and I were talking about this yesterday. We both of us have done, you know, <laughs> done plays and and when you do a play live, it is that same sense of like. Yeah, I remember once doing a Shakespeare, um, a production of Shakespeare's Coriolanus in the West End, and we had a huge broadsword fight in the middle of the first act, and it was tightly choreographed. And um, one night, the steel of the swords shattered. Both swords, oh. like, shattered and split in two. And I saw half a sword, <laughs> sort of helicopter blade, careening out into sort of towards the audience. I mean, mercifully, didn't, nothing oh. happened. But we were really had to improvise. And it, there is that unique thing about a live event, yeah. isn't there? Like, anything could happen at any time. I'm glad you said half a sword and not half a body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was so into your story and I was like, yeah, yeah, half yeah. a sword. Right, half a sword, yeah, yeah. No, it was, um, I've never, but nothing like Old Trafford, nothing like, you know, 80,000 people. It's uh, totally unique. Yeah, um, I, th- I think like you overthink kind of the build up to it. I don't know if you did yeah. this when you were doing theatre, like them days before, oh, I've got a big performance. But when you get on there, you're just doing you're and you zone. know what you're doing. Yeah. You're well trained for it. And yeah. I always felt like that was when I was at my best when. But the days before I would yeah. overthink it. Did you ever feel like that? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes it's like that, even on film sets, when you have a, 
a big scene or something, there may be a scene in a script where you think, oh, actually, this is the day. This is the scene between one character, two characters, three characters. Everyone's got to bring their A game. The dialogue's amazing. The whole story hinges on it. Some huge piece of information is revealed. One of you gets very vulnerable. And there's no, nothing can help you. The editing isn't going to help you. There's no visual effect shot that's going to help you. It's just like, bring your A game. And it is that the weekend before you're thinking, okay, it's coming on Monday. Yeah. And then once you're in the scene, you're not thinking about it. You're just in it. Yeah. And you're in the flow. Because I guess even if you were doing a movie where you do get a chance to redo that, yeah. surely it's so hard to recreate if you don't capture 100%. that moment 100%. in that time. I wonder, has there been times in your career, is there any that you can pinpoint? Because for you, Jill, right, we were, t- we were talking the other week about the, the final of the Euros, right? And the excitement building up to it. Has there ever been scenes in some of your films where you're like, right, I'm looking around and it's world-class actor, world-class actor, and you feel like, I've got to elevate myself today. Who, yeah. who is that, that memory? Honestly, that like? there was a, I, as, soon as, you, as soon as you asked that question, I know exactly what it is. It was, there was a scene on the first Avengers film where I was playing Loki and um, I was the antagonist of the whole thing. And so in order for the heroes to win, the villain has to lose. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. And we were all called on set. And it was like me. And I was the antagonist up against Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. Wow. Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Chris Evans as Captain America, Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, and Jamie Renner as Hawkeye. And they were standing on one side of the room, and I was standing on the other. Wow, <laughs> wow. I was like, like, there's some kind of penalty shootout there. Yeah. I you was going to say, that's a great He's five a side team. <laughs> that is a great yeah. five a side team. Wow. And I was like, and it was, it was uh, intimidating, but also thrilling. It was an amazing privilege, and you know, I love those guys, and we all became really close friends as a result of that film. Because it was... Um, it was the first of its kind in a way, and when we were making it, it felt like a big, a big swing. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we just had to, I mean, you know, we had to work hard as a team and make sure it that the yeah. whole project came off. And so that that sense of it took us five months. We were in New Mexico and in Cleveland and thinking, God, I hope this. I hope we can pull this off. <laughs> so, uh, but that was a really special day. Yeah. I remember there, that. Is, there is so many crossovers. I've actually got a little bit of advice to ask you on. So. I did some filming recently. I got asked to do like this advert thing and it was two full days of filming. I just wanted to ask if this is normal. So there, two full days, did about 32 hours filming and all the produced was three 30 second videos. <laughs> and I'm thinking, am I rubbish or is this what they do? do That's they just, what they do, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I promise okay, you. I for promise you. you. Yeah. For you. So yeah. how long does a movie take? Because I was thinking... 36 hours for two or three 30 second videos how long does it take to actually do a movie some movies are yeah I mean it's not totally normal by the way first of all to completely (laughs) reassure you and I bet you were great Um, yeah some (laughs) films it really depends on the budget but some movies take four four or five months wow and then the finished product is two hours wow and maybe you're prepping the movie before that so you're doing two or three months of prep before you start filming and then you film for, for five months yeah, and then you wait and then maybe in post-production you go back and, and you promote it. It's, it's, the commitment is, is um, yeah, some, my, the first couple of films I made, I was like, is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a year of my life. Yeah. And then it's over in an hour and a half. Yeah. But it's like, a, I always see it as like a kind of, um, like a really rich pasta sauce or something. Yeah. All the ingredients are going in and then it just has to marinate and, yeah, and um, and kind of stew, and then eventually you're left with something. How many times would you watch the movie back? We all have to get over the basic terror of looking at our own faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is sort of you know looking at your face, going why, why does my face do that? Why is my face? <laughs> That is you know, not a problem for you. No, no, I'm sorry. Is, this is why me and no, Ben no. get podcast no, no. work. <laughs> <laughs> You're on movies. No, <laughs> There's a big difference. <laughs> but it is, we all get... It's like you're hearing your own voice on an answering yeah, machine yeah. or a voicemail. You feel so self-conscious about it. But I have, you know, lots of like senior actors when I was younger, they said, if you can get past that, it's really, you can really learn. Yeah. Because you might think, oh, I got away with that. But next time yeah. I will maybe do less or 
m- make it more internal yeah. or actually I wasn't doing quite enough or I could have, could have committed more. I got, or you can remember a scene and think, because you'll find when you're filming, there's so much that can distract you. Yeah. And maybe you do get distracted by something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does not sound like you, you go, at all. Oh, <laughs> I was distracted by something. So just you to learn. clarify, this wasn't a new movie. It was just like a kitchen, <laughs> kitchen advert <laughs> for 20 <Okay>. seconds. <laughs> I'm not breaking yeah. into Hollywood. <laughs> what superhero would you play if you oh, could play a superhero? Oh, I actually don't know. Haven't you I got don't... a suit? Didn't you get in no, on the celebrity? Yeah, Can you get given in, a suit? In, in the jungle. In the jungle. I uh, yeah. did get asked the question if you could have like a superpower power what would it be and I said you know just when life is so busy I wish I had like there was a program called Bernard's Watch and you can just stop time go and run all your errands and then uh, come back and time's the same did you ever it. see this show I don't way. know if I did but it it's, sounds like a great it was show just incredible. Yeah. Like, it's so good yeah, it's but so I amazing. would love that like let's stop time I know this podcast isn't boring hopefully but we're going to do the podcast and then it's still the same time yeah so nice yeah. more hours in the day exactly imagine being able to stop time Exactly. Having that the, the ability to go back as well, because he, he one, there was one episode where he sort of turn back time as well and change things. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, but that could get the interest. <laughs> one one thing that straight away that I noticed that you two hadn't come and you sat down and said, "How's the coffee?" Right. Which yeah, I absolutely love. Yeah, now, yeah, Jill yeah. obviously is a bit of a connoisseur, yeah. but I, I didn't realise that you were as well. Well, I do like my coffee. Yeah, it's funny. Do you find this when you travel? People expect you as a Brit to love tea. Yeah. Yeah. And you sort of go, I do, I don't mind tea. Yeah. I love coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when you're traveling as well, sometimes the, this is one of my like uh, daily grinds. <laughs> when they give you a cup of tea and it's been the waters in one of them big coffee pots, yes. you know, like in a hotel. So you pour your cup of tea and it tastes a half coffee, yes. half, half tea. tea. Oh, Awful. that's a bad day. What, that's so dear. yours is a, you have a flat white, yeah, don't you? Yeah, flat white, yeah. What yeah. do you go for? Americano. No milk of any kind. No messing around. No, or espresso. I think there's no... I'm going to put myself out there now. Yeah. There is no greater pleasure in life than an espresso after lunch. Yeah. It, a I, good one. A good one. Wow, well, we're about yeah. to get absolutely <laughs> beaten up so by a ball here. We should just point out, we are actually sitting right I next know, to where I training is going. Yeah, we're watching the world like 11. I'm, seeing if, I'm, I'm actually just seeing who can play and who can't. Oh. Yeah, yeah, is there anyone that you... Um, I always think, right, we've just talked about your your acting and the idea of being surrounded by superstars is there anyone since you've got here that you've been like oh my gosh I'm stood next (laughs) (laughs) you know what I'm always late for I'm I'm really bad like I don't like to blame myself I just have a lot going on that I am late and I was running down the corridor I was like I can't keep Tom Hiddleston waiting (laughs) and I'm trying to find my book and my knees getting fatter and I'm like oh my god I've left him waiting so I'm sorry no but you're that's consistency that's consistent. Yeah, you get the same yeah. treatment we get to Never any change. jail footballers as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So every bit is important. So take us back, right? So where does this love of coffee stem from? Because you were saying to us yes. before. Well, so I remember when I was at uni, I was at, um, when I was revising for my exams every spring. I mean, it's around sort of this time. It's like, it was May, June. And the whole, the whole place would just go silent because suddenly it's like everyone's thinking, We've actually hang on, focus now. I haven't done any work all year. <laughs> Exams are coming up. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and you know you're going to be revising all day. And I thought, I'm going to start the day right. And I get up and I would go, I walk down the street to this cafe called Savino's by the bus station. And um, they serve the most exquisite Italian coffee. Proper, like you'd have a pastry sometimes. Oh. Uh, black Americano. Thank you very much. Sun rising. And I just have that moment. Do the crossword. Not thinking about work, nothing. Go back, do some revision, do six hours, go for a run, job done. End yeah. of the day. It is yeah. That sounds like the perfect day. Yeah. Not the revision, but the coffee and the run. And the run. <laughs> Did you have the same? <laughs> yeah, when you were no, at college, were you doing the same That sort of thing? sounds like the perfect moment. Like, even when I go on holiday and stuff like that and it's really hot, people think I'm crazy because I like to have my coffee in the sun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. I think it's from... Do you like when you go to Europe or something? I'm really lucky. I've worked in Europe a lot. And actually, when I was starting, we, I was in a part of a theatre company and we used to tour around taking like Shakespeare productions to Europe. But I look back now and it was such a great privilege because you'd be, truthfully, you know, I wouldn't be needed at work until like six o'clock. Yeah. So you just get up. You're in Spain, Madrid, somewhere, yeah. Barcelona, Milan. I think I'll just go and find a coffee bar yeah. and sit there. So it's true. It's lovely. So my brother lives in Madrid, so I go like twice a year. 
and I always go to the same coffee shop and it's just it's just so nice in that moment. But I was going to say, it's really random that now, whenever I travel around, so recently, basically this week, I got put in a hotel in London and as soon as I walked in, I was like, I was here when we went to the Olympics, but I don't remember anything about training, the games, nothing. Yeah. I'm like, there's a good coffee shop <laughs> just down the <this> street <laughs> so on great. the right. And that's yeah. what I remember. So I always say it to the girls, that's I'm like, so nice. obviously that's it's so about nice. the moment when you're making movies and you're playing football games but you remember everything It's funny, I do the it. same thing. I've had that when I've gone on location somewhere. I think, where's my little, where am I, where are my places going to be? Yeah. Where am I going to get that Saturday morning coffee? That you know? is what I do as well. Yeah. It's those things, isn't it, that sort of bring you back to you? You know, so when it's yeah. all a bit mad and you can yeah. get five minutes to sit down with a coffee yeah. just be like, oh, yeah. I'm here. I'm me yeah. again for, for five yeah, minutes yeah. And, just, and just chill out. How do you cope with Ellis and John? We want to tell you about the brand new series of our podcast, How Do You Cope, available now on BBC Sounds. Let's create spaces where young people feel confident to say, actually, I need help. Each week, we speak to guests about some of the challenges they've had to overcome throughout their lives, all answering the question, how do you cope? You should let it seep out from every pore in your body and let it be physical and rageful so that it can leave. They've been some of the most illuminating conversations Conversation I've ever had. From BBC Radio 5 Live. How do you cope with Ellis and John? Listen on BBC Sounds. Jill Scott's Coffee Club. The header for Jill Scott. England yes. score through Jill Scott. From BBC Radio 5 Live. I wanted to go back a little bit. Tell us where you were at university. I was at university at Cambridge. Right, Cambridge cool. Uni, yeah. A long time ago now. Gosh, over 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> I'm really intrigued. What were you like at uni? Um, what was I like? It was, um, I don't know. You'd have to ask my friends. I was pretty, it was a really amazing, I look back at that time and realise how fortunate I was. I was so lucky to get in, I think. And um, I did a bit of acting at Cambridge and that's kind of where I started. And I was just like, I can't believe I'm being paid to do this thing I love. Did you have them moments in, because the only things I remember from when I went to uni is getting dressed as a Smurf <laughs> and, and, and heading, to the, heading to the Monday night union. Yeah. So yes. do they do that? Yeah, they, of course they do. <laughs> okay. yeah, of course Please they tell do. me there's a picture of you dressed as a Smurf <laughs> not, not as a Smurf, maybe, but as something else. Yeah, I remember there was like, Something in Freshers' Week. Freshers' was, Week, that, that was which it. was there. Was, I was some three-legged thing. I was, <laughs> was tied to somebody, and we went round. And I was like, this poor person has to put up with me for the whole night. <laughs> yeah. You know. um, yeah, but there was lots of that. And then there were two kebab vans in the in the Market Square. <laughs> Staple part of the evening, isn't it? Absolutely, oh. always. Yeah, yeah. I love how this is the only kind of link I can give you to being at university. <laughs> That I got dressing, dressed as a smurf. Dressing as a smurf. Basically <laughs> failed university. Yeah, yeah. But I had a yeah. great time. I had a well, great time. Where are you, you need to? Uh, I went to Loughborough, but basically nice. it was a time when women's football we weren't professional, so right. I only went for the football because right. they were doing um, like scholarships where you could yeah. go and train. And I knew I, would, I was quite good academically, but I was also, I didn't put the work in. Yeah. Like my work was always in sport and everything. So yeah, I ended up doing my first year three times, ended up with about a £20,000 student loan. <laughs> but yeah, dressed as a I smurf. Would say, I would say things turned out okay. I got better at football, so <laughs> I try and be like, yeah. okay, it was an yeah. investment but you into also that. met like like you were saying you, you you met so many people with so many people that actually like helped shape you yeah in I your did. in your life I as did. well but the girls that went on to play for england steph horton carly telford they managed to do it and get a degree so <laughs> it was just me that was a left out <laughs> really. i tell you i tell you what i did want to actually ask you about um did were you born near wimbledon Yes, well, I was actually born in central London, but grew up in Wimbledon. Yeah, so yeah. do you love the tennis as well? I absolutely love the yeah, tennis. Yeah. Love it. I've got yeah. um, tickets to go this year, and nice. I'm, I'm so excited, yeah. really it's excited. So I've become actually more impressed and kind of invested in tennis the older I've got. Yeah. I think because I, the game is, you would appreciate this, I'm sure you do, but the, the athleticism yeah. of those players, I find that daz dazzling, yeah. like, truly dazzling. And... I've got lots of actor friends who also love watching tennis. So sometimes, you know, oh, nice. you find yourself on set. Um, I do this uh, show for Marvel and D uh, Disney called Loki, about Loki. And yeah, yeah, Owen yeah. Wilson is in it and he loves tennis as well. Yeah. So we find ourselves literally on set, crowded around a little sort of 
iPhone or something watching a game and they have to pull us out and go, guys, we're ready for you. We need to do a scene. (laughs) I love watching tennis. I just think... It's also as you get older. Do you play? Do you yeah. Play so I used to play when I was younger, yeah. but recently I've got into paddle. Oh, you, yes. Have you played it before? It's a really rapid yeah. sport, cool. isn't so it? So when cool. I went to Madrid, my brother was like, well, go for a nice friendly game of paddle and I can probably show, see these scars on my leg. <laughs> oh, my God. They are off paddle playing the other week because I got God. so competitive with them. We turned into like 10 year old kids again, and it's meant to be like obviously non contact. Yes, yes. I yes. was sliding <laughs> and everything. But, but I, would think, so good. I would think you would be really good at tennis. I would think your, I your mm. edge and your pace and your athleticism would transfer immediately to oh. those white lines. I was Sunderland under 14 champion. If there that you go. Do. I knew yeah, it. I two knew it. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Nothing past that. Nothing past that. So Tennis is so you. hard. But they, they say Rafa Nadal was a great footballer. Did I? Did you know that? No, I didn't actually no, they, I mean, know. like, seriously, a proper talent. Wow. So, uh, and he uh, had to make a choice. It was like, do, oh, does, did he? Because he could have played, like, at a national, international level. Yeah. So he was like, does, does he play tennis and be the greatest ever? Yeah. <laughs> Quite, that's a question. Wait, yeah. hang on. Is he your number one, Rafa? I get very, I, he makes me cry. He just is, he just, the determination. But then also Roger is like Fred Astaire. He's For like, me, it's he, Roger. It's Roger is just, Always. he's uh, the grace. Yeah. The elegance of it. Yeah. yeah. They it, are such amazing athletes. So I remember being with Andy Murray in 2012 when we were in the Olympic Village and I was just in my element walking around like all these stars and I remember Andy Murray it was the night that the Olympics had finished and I was like oh you're going to come and have a drink and whatever he was like no I'm going to Miami like early (laughs) hours of the morning to compete again straight after an Olympics and I was like god I need like two three weeks off but they just go 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 okay here's a question for you I really want to ask you this okay I was watching the Australian Open yeah at some point early this year and Andy Murray, five sets. This is a five setter, yeah. Oh, Four in the morning, wow. a metal hit. Wow. Like he finally won. He lost the first two sets, I think, and he finally won. Yeah. And it was like 4.30 in the morning. And it was absolutely grueling. I thought I'd lost like several years of my life just from the anxiety of watching, <laughs> <laughs> watching him. But I love watching Andy. Yeah. And I was actually there in 2013 at Wimbledon for the final on centre court, watching him do it yeah. when he won. It was so amazing. But he said in his post, Jim Courier interviewed him afterwards, and he said, he said, Andy, how do you, uh, why do you put us through it? Why do you put yourself through it? And he said, well, you know what? This is going to sound odd, but when it looks like I'm having a horrible time out there, that's when I'm having the best time. Yeah. Those are the moments yeah. I love. Yeah. As a competitor, this is my question for you. Okay. Is that how you feel and how you felt about football like when you're really up against it yeah when you're like i don't know two nil down or you're into extra time does that does that yeah. is that the bit where you think oh i love this yeah definitely i think their moments are the best like when you get them cup final wins and they've gone to like i remember us playing arsenal and i smashed my ankle and i was literally like limping through the last 30 minutes of extra time and then you win and you just love and you're like you're like a warrior like out there and you really yeah i do i do totally get that like in them moments where your backs are against the wall like them cup finals where you win just like one nil it's such a tight game you remember them so much more yeah. than the ones where it's like three, four, yeah, five Yeah, and nil. you feel comfortable yeah. and it's easy. And it's like them moments that are just addictive. People say like, why do you keep going? Like I'm sure for him, people thought he was going to retire. Yeah. But they're like, there's always another fight. There's always something else. And yeah, he's just absolutely brilliant. I remember when he won and I was thinking, I used to have loads of Fred Perry trainers. Am I going to now have Andy Murray trainers? <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't have the same ring to it. But yeah, I just think he's a he's an amazing athlete to keep going and to be doing that at four o'clock in the morning. I know. That Incredible. level. I know. I know. I also that. just think he just seems like such a wonderful man as well, doesn't yeah, he? Just yeah. like such a great guy. So everything he stands for, everything yeah. he says, you just yeah, sort of yeah. feel such an, an affinity with him. Where do you think it comes from in you, that will? Mm. That I think just from being strength. a young kid, I just always wanted to win. And I think that feeling of like never letting myself down. So honestly, I think if I hadn't gone on to play for England or reached the top level... I think I would have been okay with it because I know I would have given absolutely everything to get there. And if I didn't get there, then I think I always had that sense of I didn't want to let myself down, like no regrets. So I kind of was never fixated by the outcome, but just that day to day of being the best I can, putting the work in. And then I was like, what will be, will be. And 
I'm not saying for you, because definitely not, but for me, there was luck along the way, there was opportunities. Oh, and, definitely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Every I see, life is, is like that. Yeah, yeah, and I see players where I think, oh, they could have had a career and they didn't. But I think, yeah, just looking in the mirror at the end of every day and saying, you know what, you, you give it your all today and I could take satisfaction in I that. I saw it even in training. <laughs> I saw like a look, a, look, a look change in your eyes. It was like, we're going to win this. I, I think that's always fascinating that you see with ex-pros, they can't turn it off. Yeah. They just it, as soon as you cross that line, everyone who used to play and everyone now who's playing and trying to live up to the the pros on there, like, I just I can't help it. Yeah. Today I've got to be, I've got to be at it. Which I is am really all or nothing. So fascinated yeah. by that. Me too, by the yeah. way. Yeah. There's, there's a. Do you find there's sometimes a bit of a? You have to keep that right to keep that in balance in some way. Yeah, I think there's just it's just something in you. Like I went yeah. to play a fun game of paddle in Madrid <laughs> on my holiday. I didn't even have running trainers on. Suddenly I'm in like the little A and E hut getting, <laughs> getting my cuts in. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing. That's but a big uh, rivalry I for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I'm the same thing. Like yeah. we did a season two of Loki last summer, and um, I spent a day basically doing wire work where you. Um, you're doing a lot of like falling and maybe you're flying. I don't want to, I can't spoil exactly where I where oh, the character was. <laughs> uh, but, but like you're hurtling through the air at great speed. And so the, what they do is they put you in a harness underneath your costume. I don't know if you've done this on your kitchen. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's <seems> too. <laughs> um, um, and then they cut little holes in the, in the shirt yeah. and, and basically clip you in to, to wires and then they send you up and you can basically they can manipulate oh. where you go I mean that's how Superman flies that's how Thor flies and, and I was falling and I did a whole day of the wires and, they, and sometimes you know, they, they're pulling you by your right leg spinning you around and you flip through them you're in this kind of skydiving harness and you've got the adrenaline and you're committing to the action of falling and uh, they go, you're right up there. You've been up there for a few hours. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> and then it gets to the end of the day. I've been in a wire for, you know, eight hours, nine hours. Wow. That's and, whole time. Yeah. And it's wow. probably for like, as you say, for like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. And I take my costume off and there's like <laughs> rope burn and bruises <laughs> and like my wow. shoulders have gone pink and something blue. And, and I'm like, that's only 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But you have to, it's all or nothing. Yeah, it's, it's like you can't like let yourself down. It's just something yeah. in your mind, isn't yeah. it? Like it's that almost, do we need to get you get you down now? No, I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm fine. Yes. I'm, a <laughs> yeah. I'm a superhero. Yeah. I'm a superhero. Yeah, and listen, I think everyone is is the same really when you get into that challenging mode. It doesn't matter whether it's in acting, whether it's in football, you're like, no, I'm going to do this now. And you've got everyone watching as well, right? You've got everyone, so, so you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Like, Can I come down for a bit, please? Yeah. Could you yeah. give me five? That's why... Sunday. I know anyone listening will have already watched it, but I'm so intrigued yeah. as to how people are going to respond to that precision focus, that moment. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. But by the time this goes out, we'll have won five nil. <laughs> That's, <laughs> exactly. That's it. <laughs> putting it out exactly. there. Putting it out exactly. there. We spoke a little bit earlier on about Jill being slightly late for today, but she yep. had a very good reason because she was actually at a wedding yesterday. So she had to come yeah, from the wedding, and she all the That's way down. That's a very good friend. Exactly. <laughs> Ask me. Now, uh, we, I was wondering. I feel like you must be the life and soul of a good wedding, because. <laughs> A, obviously, you're incredibly charming and funny and good to be around, but B, you're a world-class dancer oh, as well. I don't know dancer. whether you're getting the world-class from. No, 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 no. no. We, we have both been dancing. watching you this wow. morning. Like, absolutely. Where, like, where does that come from? And also, on a, a wedding day, on a big wedding day, are you the first one on the dance floor? Are you the I, one that I, leads I do in? Love, I do love a band, yeah. A band <laughs> followed by a DJ. Yeah, he's um, a very good dancer. You love it. It's, um, yeah, dance more. Yeah. You know, we don't get life is life is long, but it's also short, and you might as well dance through it. Yeah, that's my philosophy. That is true. Is, I'm so um, jealous. Like, I'm so je I'm an awful dancer. I'm 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 completely untrained. It's that really, can't no, be I, true. It's, it's just a misspent youth in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you picked up those moves? I honestly, I just lit made them up. I mean, I'm I don't I honestly don't know. You're very you're being very sweet, but no, I, no, no, I, I do love dancing and. <laughs> Do you have know. like three moves? That's like you go two moves, so everyone thinks you're good. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. That's what he does. Um, <laughs> oh. Just you know, just go with the go with the flow. Oh. Feel the music. Let's pass one but, of them things through. Come yeah. on, start that way. 
Go, pass it, it on. Nice. There, I'm back through, <laughs> back through. Yes. Oh, good. There you can see it forward move. It sort of gradually it. progressed from like really nice, elegant, sort of right the way through yeah. down to the end, just stiff as a board. We <laughs> like needed, needed to go on charge at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, exactly. Like, did exactly. You, Jill, did you dance at the wedding yesterday? Um, I've got a few moves, just like, same as you really, 90s moves like that I like to like Do you do any out. swing? Do you do any do you like... want to see my move? This is yeah. one. Let's have it. Here we go. This is my one move. So basically... Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. You guys are actually quite similar in terms of your... In terms yeah, of your yeah, style. yeah. That's quite... It's got, you've got the bounce. Could I get you to show it at the same time? Is that okay? Can we see this both together? You have to do oh, I love it. Kicking an imaginary ball. You can also <laughs> add this one in. If you've got another one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. I hope you you're not going to be this out of breath at the, the weekend. On the podcast, if you were listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, was, that wasn't exactly the, the, the best sort of podcast stuff, yeah, but I promise we'll put that on social media podcast. Podcast. so people camera. can see you on social media. Um, just before we wrap up, we're going to spill the tea, so we need you to give us one thing that you've maybe never revealed before or never told anyone on a podcast before. Okay. One thing that I've never revealed before. Well, I think this is the first time... I've played 11 aside football in 30 years. 30 years? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, okay, we, do you know what? Is that right? How so long? you How were long? five. <laughs> yeah, you're very kind. <laughs> yeah. You're very kind. No, th- no, that can't be right. 25 years, maybe. So if I'm 42, 24 years when I was 18. Yeah. So I haven't played 11 aside football since I was 18. The pitch is quite since big, isn't school. it? When you yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, but honestly, Tom, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. It's Thanks for really having me. Yeah. It's been so much fun, and we're very honoured to have you on the podcast. Jill Scott's Coffee Club from BBC Radio Five Live. Jill, I think I might have just fallen in love. Oh, how lovely is he? <laughs> He's such a nice man. guy. I was just listening to him speak and was just thinking I could listen to you talk all day. And, you know, the only person that had that effect on us where I'm like, you've got such charisma is probably David Beckham. He's such elite company to be yeah. in. And also yeah. the fact that you have sat with Tom Hiddleston and David Beckham yeah. and have got stories to tell about both is pretty cool. Oh, he's just so nice. I can, like, And so engaged and interested in you as well. Yeah. She's just so lovely. Yeah. And a phenomenal dancer. Yes, what a dancer. Yeah, if we if ever... I just had a dance-off with Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> do you know when you have them moments Out in life? Body. And I do have a lot of them, but... That is mad. That that's, that's just up there, happened. isn't it? Yeah, it's really bizarre. Definitely. I feel like this would be one of those days that you look back on. You think, how on earth have we ended up in that position there? You know what? I was walking over for the podcast and I bumped into a couple of guys and they were like, "Where are you off to?" And I'm like, "I'm just about to keep my cool because I've just got Tom Hiddleston on the <laughs> Coffee Club podcast." <laughs> and I was like, "As if he's just there waiting." So I walk <laughs> over like, all, "Hi, you okay?" <laughs> Like it's any other guest, but wow, that was amazing. That's quite cool, actually, because he was literally sitting waiting for I you. Know, That's so I funny. actually left him waiting. You know what, though? It goes to show that I don't treat people any no. different. I'm just always late. Oh, doesn't always matter who Jill. you are. Yeah. Then I'm just always late. Um, uh, well, do you know one thing we didn't ask him about? He went to school with with uh, Prince William as well. Oh, yeah, we didn't ask yeah. him about that. So you that. were mutual friends. Yeah, but I think we're going to get told off for mentioning Prince William yeah, too many times get, on this we podcast. We get banned. I think we will. You know, like when you play a song on the radio and you have to pay? Yeah. I think we're going <laughs> we, to have imagine, to stop. We just get a letter, we get a fine. From... We're going to have to start paying you if you use Prince William's name 11 times. Getting hit with a copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That was, I think, one of my... I mean, we always we say, say that. We say this all the time. But, uh, you are right, though. You said it on the podcast. We only seem to have nice people. Yeah. And he was another one. He was just fabulous. Yeah. So, like, and but again, isn't it mad how many crossovers there is, yeah. like, between anything, like, sport and movies, sport and yeah. music, sport, across businesses. Like, even some of the stuff he was saying, like, I want to go out and do a 5K run with him now, and yeah. I feel like we'd be so competitive. I'd love, I, like, afterwards, we like had very a very brief chat afterwards and he was saying like how there is such a like honesty to going out running it's just you yeah. on your own and your thoughts and that's it yeah and it's like yeah. so true and you think even with someone like him who's in a part of probably the biggest film franchise of all time in the marvel yeah. films and he's still just out he goes quick 5k yeah. and go and have a run it's so special do you know what i think would be the biggest mic drop ever if me and him could sit somewhere hot 
have an espresso like you talked about and then go and do a 5k run yeah or a really aggressive game of paddle <laughs> yeah i don't think i'd have to step out the house for as long as i live yeah. ever again just like that's it done mic drop out oh what a legend hello it's jason manford here and i'm steve edge and this is best, best men the brand new podcast from Radio 4, all about being the best man. We'll be meeting the people who succeeded and those that have failed. What are the big no-nos then? I'd say anything about exes. Why do people do that? <laughs> and crucially, having a bit of a laugh along the way. You set fire to your speech. There was tea lights everywhere, oh, man. Tea light. <laughs> best men. Listen on BBC Sounds. People who know me think I'm dead. An original drama starring Rosamund Pike and Hugh Laurie. Dear Emily, I had to write. I might be dying, you see. A story about lies and love in the face of death. Emmy, I remember how much of a coward you are. How you used a terrorist attack to run away from your mess and fake your own death. I'm the only one who knows the truth. People Who Knew Me, a 10-part series. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.